in order for our software, our machine learning frameworks, to interface with that optimally, um, AWS has created the Neuron SDK, Software Development Kit. So, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe you can just tell us a bit more about that and why this is essential um, for making the most of your specialized hardware accelerators. Awesome, yes. So, so Neuron is absolutely critical for making Trainium and Inferentia successful. And and the reason it's it's kind of funny. I, I kind of I'm trying to think about the answer, and, and one thing keeps coming to my mind. We have a, a, the the original Annapurna CTO, who's now a, a VP and distinguished engineer in in Amazon, keeps telling us. I I swear I hear it once a week or something like that. Don't be cheap heads. And what he means by that <laughs> is don't think only about the chip, but rather how people will consume the chip, how the software folks that need to run their workload will experience that chip. So uh, at the very first day of building Trainium and Inferentia, we started thinking about the software integration into PyTorch, TensorFlow, and now JAX also, uh, and trying to make the experience for our users as seamless as possible. So uh, one thing that, uh, again, is very tempting to do, and I've seen folks do it, is to create what's called a model zoo. So basically, you have a set of optimized models that you implemented for your hardware, and customers can choose from these models and run them on your hardware. But in my, in my opinion, that's, that's absolutely the wrong way to go, because customers don't want to be limited to a set of 20 models. They want to allow their teams to innovate and come with their own models and their own operators and the, their, their own extensions and still have it run as effectively as possible uh, on the heart. So for that, we have a couple of things that we built within the Neuron stack. The first uh, is the Neuron compiler. And the Neuron compiler is quite a, a, a significant and, and, a, and a, a sophisticated say, a piece of software that basically does two things. It does lowering and optimization. So it starts by capturing a graph from the framework level, whether it's PyTorch or anything else. And then it encodes the computation graph that you described, whether it's transformer or anything else, into, a, into a, what we call an intermediate representation. So that's sort of a file that describes the entire computation. And each and the, and the file is, is constructed as a graph with uh, with nodes that perform computation and dependencies or, or, uh, or, or edges that go from the output of one operator to, to the input of, an, of another one. Uh, after doing that, we do uh, something that is uh, basically the heart of the neuron compiler, which is what we call the tensorizer sometimes. Uh, we sometimes call it also the middle end of the compiler. So we basically take each and every operator and describe it in loop formats. So for example, if we have a convolution or a matrix multiplication, we can describe it as a nested set of loops where at the very in, uh, innermost loop, we get some scalar operations that do a multiplication and addition. And that's, that's how you can describe matrix multiplication. And then once we have things described in this way, we can apply a set of, of very significant optimizations that will target the hardware better. So just to give you a sense of things that we do, we would fuse loops together. Uh, and, and by fusing loops together, we actually, it's kind of hard to, to envision, but we actually minimize data movement and memory footprint. So let's try to kind of visualize that. If you have a set of loops doing a matrix multiplication and then a set of loops doing a nonlinearity, a JLU activation on the result, when the, make the, when the loops are not fused together, you'll do the entire matrix multiplication, write the result to some memory location, and then enter the second loop, which reads everything and then, and then uh, uh, performs the, uh, the nonlinearity, the JLU activation. If we fuse the loops together, we can basically get to a point where every single tile of matrix multiply that gets completed immediately goes through the, the nonlinearity and only then gets written to memory. And by doing that, we, we reduce what we call the working set, the amount of memory that we need to keep cached at the time. And by, by doing that, we keep the data, the data local, we reduce the amount of bandwidth that we need from the memory and improve performance overall. 
I kind of try to speed things up to not describe the entire stack, but mm -hmm. uh, but at the very end of this tensorizer stage, we take the innermost loops and we kind of collapse them into hardware intrinsics, basically instructions that can be uh, executed by the hardware with a single instruction. So if I kind of try to tie to, to the uh, beginning of our conversation, we had the, the large systolic array that can do matrix multiplications very efficiently. So if we... So we let's say that the matrix, the, the systolic array can handle 128 by 128 matrix multiplies. So we create an inner tile from the loop with 128 by 128 dimension, and we lower that to a single hardware instruction. And we eventually perform scheduling and allocation to maximize communication and computation at the same time and target the hardware in the most efficient way. So I'll say one more thing, and then I'll, I'll pause again. Um, <laughs> So that's one, that's one kind of theme of making it as easy as possible for customers to target our hardware. At the end of the day, they need to add two lines of code that basically uh, instruct the, the, the compiler what are the edges of the graph that you want to, to target the device, that you want to compile, and everything else happens behind the scenes. The other key capability that we bake into the hardware and the software stack is what we call custom operators. Uh, you touched on and QLR uh, before and about uh, the innovations of doing 4-bit inference and, and, uh, and so on. That's exactly the reason that we built this mechanism that we call custom operators. At its heart, it's just a set of deeply embedded vector processors that are inside our Trinium compute units. And they have access to the other, the other engines in the caches. And the, the nice thing is that they can run your C code without our involvement at all. So you can compile the entire graph, but then let's say you have this magic operator that you want to deploy and you don't even want to share it with us. So it can be int4 to, to int8 dequantization. It could be zero decompression or it can be anything like that. Uh, so you can build this operator uh, and, and target our hardware and run it in conjunction with the rest of the, the graph that our software stack compiled. So these two together are very powerful in, in my opinion. 